What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. For today's video, we're going to be checking out the Transformers Rise of the Beasts Studio Series Deluxe Class Wheeljack. A pretty drastic retake on the original character design and one which unfortunately we never saw too much of in the main movie itself. Although, as we check out the details, pretty bang on to his actual CG render to the point where I think at the moment this is likely to be the most accurate version of this character so far released. But that's not to say that he's the best because unfortunately I do have quite a few issues especially in the way this guy transforms it does kind of put a downer on the overall release but what i will say is the details are by far this guy's biggest selling point so as we check out the head sculpt the sick mechanized detailing we have surrounded the mouthpiece is looking awesome and the chest design is near enough a one-to-one -one match to what we actually saw in the movie a great attention to detail would be the inbuilt seat belts which do double as the braces for the robot mode and i'm gonna be honest i like pretty much everything about the way this guy looks with the exception of the forearms. They are basically a direct ripoff of the engineering that we saw on the Weaponizer mainline release, which looked decent for that figure, but when you kind of translate that basic engineering over into a significantly more detailed release, unfortunately they do kind of stick out like a sore thumb. But, if you do decide to whack out some imagination, maybe these could double as some inbuilt shield deflectors for Wheeljack to use on the battlefield to deflect enemy firepower. The leg design though, I think is looking sick. I mean, check out the details we have for the shins, the really nice sculpting for the outer leg panels, and the back of this guy surprisingly isn't looking terrible either. He's even packing a huge improvement in comparison to the mainline release, that being considerably larger door wings, which mostly do look accurate to the movie. The only downside to these would be I believe this side should basically be facing the front, but I'm going to be real guys, the transformation is already a nightmare, so had they added even more steps, I'm pretty certain it would have made it near enough impossible, and a great attention to detail would be, if you lift up this back kibble, on the underside, there is some really nice spinal detail, which again, is a great carryover from the actual CG model, so overall, I think he looks banging, stacked up against some of the other Rise of the Beast Autobots, they make for a killer looking team, it is just a shame that when it comes down to the transformation. Unfortunately, I think that is definitely this figure's biggest downfall. Now, as we check out Pablo's firepower, he is packing a pretty decently sculpted Cybertronian pistol, although unfortunately this is completely inaccurate to the sick inbuilt forearm cannons that he used in the movie. Now, I know these figures take quite a few years to develop, so more than likely this was based on concept art, but so does the film. So, I'm pretty certain Hasbro would have had a rough indication that this wouldn't have been the weapon that he used in the movie, but to be fair, it definitely doesn't look bad, and it has been cast out of this pretty awesome smoky transparent plastic. And to kind of throw it back to his G1 origins of being an inventor, the blaster does store on his backpack. So maybe he can be battling it out on the battlefield. He cooks up a brand new invention. It's ready and raring to go. He whacks it out of his backpack and begins annihilating the Decepticons on that battlefield. Now, checking out Pablo's posability, surprisingly a lot better than I was expecting. So, to begin with, the head's on a ball joint, this will look up, it will look down, rotate both side to side. The door wings are articulated so these can hinge down, hinge up, and move forwards and backwards. That's pretty helpful, especially when getting this guy into some of the slightly more dynamic poses. The shoulders will move forwards, they will then move outwards, mainly due to transformation, although the main outwards range is packed into the transformation hinge joint, which is an absolute game changer. This is brilliant, especially when he is wielding his Cybertronian blaster. There is then an elbow bend and a bicep cut, which I thought was pretty decent. Unfortunately, nothing at all out of the wrists, mainly due to the way they've been engineered. But if you spin around here to the back and lift the kibble upwards, check this out. He is packing a fully uncompromised waist joint, which is wicked. The hips will kick forwards to that far. They will then go backwards. There's a kick out to the side, a thigh cut, and in addition to that, an upper knee cut, which is mainly due to transformation, but it's an extra point of articulation. I'm definitely going to take it. In terms of the knee bend, it will go to 90, although I'm going to be honest, guys, it's pretty ugly. I mean, from this angle, it kind of looks like a huge chunk. It looks in some ways like I've just misplaced the leg. So that's not the best knee bend. And then finally, for the ankles, these can rock forwards all of the way, backwards, and tilt side to side. So those are packing a great range. The only downside would be the pin is placed quite close to the shin. So he definitely has a tendency to kind of lean backwards, which is more of an annoyance than a huge issue. I did just think it was something worth pointing out. So overall, not bad. Had he included a wrist joint, he would have been a near 10 out of 10 in terms of articulation. But to see what Pablo is truly capable of, now let's put him through the pose test. Thank you. 
Now, checking out some comparisons, on the right hand side we have the original mainline wheel jack. And I'm going to be completely honest with you guys, the comparison between Studio Series and mainline here is nowhere near as cutthroat as it has been with some of the previous releases. There are still so many things which I love about this mainline release, and with the exception of it not being an officially licensed Volkswagen fan, it is pretty spot on, much like this guy, to the movie. There are some details which are a little more crisp here on the Studio Series release, but in terms of enjoyability, ability purely, this one definitely takes the win. This guy is so much more fun to pose around and especially transform. The conversion for this one, you know, I'm giving you guys some spoilers as to what's to come, is a nightmare. So if you are after an enjoyable, pretty accurate version of Wheeljack, then definitely stick with the main line. But if you want something which is just going to look good on your shelf, stacked up against some of the other Rise of the Beast Autobots, then maybe the Studio Series is your guy. And something which I thought was straight up crazy is that unlike Nightbird, this Wheeljack Jack doesn't borrow the engineering from the mainline deluxe, but instead from the considerably cheaper and simpler weaponizer release. So as you check out some of the details on this one, the forearms are pretty much identical as so are the overall proportions of the legs. So not quite sure why Hasbro ultimately decided to base this significantly more detailed Studio Series version on an incredibly simplified release when the mainline deluxe was already pretty strong in the accuracy department. And a pretty crazy comparison of course would have to be alongside the Bumblebee movie Will Jack, the last time that we saw this guy feature in live action. I have no idea what happened between the events of Bumblebee and the Rise of the Beast movie, but Will Jack saw some stuff. I mean, check out how different he looks in comparison here to the B movie version. It's honestly a shame that they never just took the head sculpt from this guy and plonked it onto this robot design if they were so set on going with the Volkswagen bus. To be honest, when I watched the movie, I thought Will Jack reminded me way more of Beachcomber than he did of Will Jack. So I think basically what they did is they just designed a character and then slapped an A-lister name onto it, maybe to sell more toys, maybe to draw more fans in, not too sure, but yeah, these definitely do look to be completely different characters. And stacking them up against some of the other Rise of the Beast Autobots, first up we have the Studio Series Mirage, and I will say that overall Wheeljack is a slightly more impressive figure than Mirage. I really liked Mirage, I thought he was a step up in comparison to his mainline release, but unfortunately he was kibbletastic, so articulation wise, was quite compromised, whereas this guy is still not that fun to articulate, he is a little better than Mirage, so if you are kind of torn between these two releases, in my opinion, Wheeljack definitely takes the win. Here we have the Studio Series Bumblebee, which is by far one of the best Deluxe Autobots out of this Rise of the Beast subline. Deluxe Class Terracon Nightbird core class RC and it's such a shame we never saw these characters interact more in the movie as I do believe there is a little bit of a backstory between these two basically their Cybertronian love interests it would have been kind of cool to have seen how that relationship would have played out on screen but maybe they cut it for the best and for some Voyager comparisons, here we have him alongside the only other Terracon, which I believe he technically fought in the movie. Here we have Battle Trap. And finally, Optimus Prime. So, Wheeljack kind of rounds off the main Autobot cast from the film, with the exception of Stratosphere, who I'm hoping we can see get a release in 2025, but there is no denying, as a complete five, these guys look banging, maybe even better looking than the original 2007 movie cast. Now, checking out Pablo's transformation, gonna be upfront, guys, it is horrendous. Super overcomplicated, even worse than what we saw from Studio Series Mirage, but I will try my best to talk you guys through the steps, but just giving you a warning, it is not pleasant at all. So, to begin with, you are gonna wanna come here to the base, take the heel spurs, slide these here upwards, take the entire foot, and then slide this inside the leg, like that. Do the same here for this side, so, flip this here up, slide this here inside, then what you'll do is take the shin and pop this here forwards like that, spin around here to this side and do the same, so pop that open, then we're going to rotate here at the ball joint, so these cream pieces line up exactly like this, do the same here for this side, so rotate around, the instructions say to combine these pieces, but I'm going to be honest guys, 9 times out of 10 they are going to detach, so you may as well just leave them exactly like this for now, then what we'll do is spin around here to the back, take what will become the front of the Volkswagen, hinge this here down, and then take the windshield and hinge this here upwards. Now is where the fun or the atrocity begins, because what you are going to want to do here is take the shoulders, hinge these here outwards and upwards, and then make use out of that transformation joint and begin kind of sliding this here like that. Do the same here for this side, so slide outwards and then slide upwards like this. That should then allow enough clearance for these doors to kind of slide inwards. 
on both sides, which should then allow you to take the entire upper chest and detach it away from the torso. So just attach that. Then what you'll do is bring this here all the way back, which will then allow for enough clearance for us to rotate at the torso all the way around. We can then make sure the braces are snapped into place. And this is where the transformation turns into an absolute nightmare. So you will then take the doors, hinge these here backwards. And the biggest issue really are these doors because there's barely any clearance to be had here and they are made in transparent plastic. So you can already see I have this nasty stress mark, which I'm pretty certain is unfortunately going to crack over time but hinge this one here outwards also take this pull it back as far as it will go what you'll do is take the elbow joints hinge them upwards and then bring these down now once you reach to around about this point now is where you're going to want to begin rotating at the shoulder and hinging down at the same time making sure that to the best of your ability this door doesn't catch onto the forearm so what i then like to do is take these panels hinge these outwards the instructions say to save this step for later on but i'm going to recommend to do it now because because it does create for just a tad bit more clearance and you are just going to want to rotate that past this door you can see we're flexing the plastic and hinge that down like that so that is how the shoulders should end up it is a nightmare then you'll do the same here for this side so bend at the elbow take this panel open it out again hinge down and then begin kind of rotating around like this making sure that that door doesn't catch so slide that down like this so far so good i've made it look a lot easier than it actually is trust me i've transformed this guy like a hundred times and it doesn't get any more easier then what you'll do is you'll take this piece fold this here up and over the top of will jack's head until it snaps there into place then what i would recommend to do would be to take these doors and snap them into the front now there is a second set of tabs here which are going to slide into kind of the mushroom peg slot later on so just be cautious of that come here to this side and do the same so snap that there into place what i like to do now is rotate here at the waist joint now this makes things a little easier for this side unfortunately the next side is going to be a little tough but you are going to want to bring that here up and over like that then we are going to reset the waist joint so it looks like this my recommendation to you guys would be to begin kind of hinging this panel up like that so lining up the ablo with the tvp spin around here to this side and try your best to do the same so use that bicep joint hinge it out to the side rotate upwards hinge this upwards like that so at the moment everything should look roughly like that nothing is going to tab in just yet because then what we'll do is make use out of this ball joint and hinge joint you are going to want to bring these here down line that circular slot up with that tab so snap that in there the shin guard will then snap here into the base of the volkswagen bus spin around here to this side and try your best to do the same so far it's going a lot easier than any of the other attempts i've had so maybe too good to be true or is this gonna go in it went in with more or less no problem then we're gonna snap this here again into the base come up to the top make sure that we're that's tabbed in for a finishing touch snap the entire back of the bus in take this panel slide it up on these double hinge joints and this is gonna tuck on the underneath of this panel so slide those in snap that there into place and bang! Here we have Will Jack fully transformed into his officially licensed Volkswagen van mode and it looks wicked. Although I'm going to be honest guys, that transformation is horrendous. Easily one of the most complicated Studio Series Deluxes which I've checked out in a very long time and it's needlessly complicated. If you were to check out the mainline Deluxe that had a brilliant transformation. It was enjoyable to go from robot into van mode and then vice versa and I'd argue that with the exception of it not being officially licensed, it looked just as good as this one so it does make the mind wonder why they never just took that engineering and modified the sculpt so that it was a little more detailed to better match what we have here but as we check out the details the front of the van is looking sick definitely does match that wicked scene in the movie where he is fighting alongside rc against battle trap and i think it's kind of cool how you can clearly see him peering through the windscreen sorry i'm late truly a robot in disguise as we check him out here from the side again super accurate the only downside would be that he is sad 
sadly missing quite a few of the details which again we saw in the movie but even the back of the van has been super nicely sculpted which is an improvement over that mainline version and a sick attention to detail would have to be the VW engraved into the rim so definitely a brilliant van mode it's awesome to have the core Autobots all mainly be officially licensed to match what we saw in the film it really does just suck that going from point A to point B is an absolute nightmare and as we check out his weapon storage, upon first glance, you guys may be thinking that looks super lazy like we are used to seeing with some of these Studio Series Transformers, but I believe this is accurate to a deleted scene which unfortunately we just never saw in the movie. There is a poster which exists for Rise of the Beasts, and it showcases Wheeljack fully transformed with a blaster which looks exactly like this popping out of the roof. So I'm kind of thinking that maybe in battle alongside RC, this bad boy was supposed to deploy from the roof to battle it against Battle Trap, and unfortunately it was cut. It's such a shame that they appear to always cut one of the best scenes from the film. Now, checking out some vehicle mode comparisons, we are once again whacking out the absolute GOAT, the mainline Rise of the Beast wheel jack. And like I mentioned previously, they are very similar in size, and with the exception of this one having the official license, very similar in detail too. So, it does kind of beg the question why Hasbro never just took the more enjoyable conversion of the mainline release and integrated it into a slightly more detailed figure, because I think if they had, this easily would have been the most enjoyable Rise of the Beast deluxe Autobot to so far be released so it's kind of a shame to see the transformation ultimately letting this studio series one down and again to kind of go back to my points when in robot mode if you're not super set on movie accuracy and you're not too fussed on this one having the vw license and you already own this in your collection is there really a need to get the studio series version gonna be honest guys i don't think so because just by itself this is an absolute banger here is how Pablo stacks up against some of the other Rise of the Beast Autobots. So up first we have Mirage, Deluxe Class Bumblebee and scale wise this appears to be pretty spot on to what we saw in the movie. Here he is compared against the core class Rise of the Beast RC, so as you would expect, not in scale because these bike formers unfortunately never tend to match up in vehicle mode, but in robot mode, I thought these made for a wicked pairing. And then finally, we have the leader of the Autobots, the Rise of the Beast Optimus Prime, and it really is brilliant to finally recreate that very first, I believe, official onset photo of the main five Autobots from the Rise of the Beast movie, and like I mentioned, pretty much all of them are officially licensed, so when it comes to the look of the vehicle modes Hasbro mostly did a wicked job when it comes to this team and now we have these guys I am so hoping they can begin delving into some of the lesser known characters from the film such as Stratosphere and so, wrapping up on this review for the Transformers Studio Series, Rise of the Pablo Deluxe Class Wheeljack. Overall, detail-wise, this guy looks brilliant. I mean, the robot mode is without a doubt the most accurate release of this character that we've so far seen, and the articulation isn't too bad either. My biggest issue and complaint would have to be that transformation. It is so tedious and unnecessarily complex. For younger collectors, I can imagine it being an absolute chore. It will probably go down in history as being the 2009 leader Optimus of the studio series although the Volkswagen bus mode does look brilliant you know it's wicked as I mentioned to finally get all of the five main Autobots officially licensed and matching how they looked on screen so if you are super pressed on movie accuracy then this is definitely a figure you are going to want to pick up but if you already own the mainline version and you're not too fussed about it not having the official Volkswagen license then I'm going to be real guys I would stick with that mainline deluxe because it's brilliant it's super fun to pose around and the transformation is a heck of a lot more straightforward than what we have here from the Studio Series version. So, I am hoping that going forwards, this won't become the standard for transformation when it comes to deluxes because I thought Mirage was bad. Damn, Wheeljack is on a whole other level. I would love to get your thoughts on this, Pablo, down in the comment section below. What do you guys think? I want to thank you all so much for watching and until my next review, transform and roll out!